A child shall be born for us, and he will be called God the Almighty. Every tribe of the earth shall be blessed in him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let's take a moment to call to mind our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You raise the dead to new life in the Spirit, Lord have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner, Christ have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, as we see how the nativity of your Son, according to the flesh, draws near, We pray that to us, your unworthy servants, mercy may flow from your word, who chose to become flesh of the Virgin Mary and establish among us his dwelling, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. Thus says the Lord God, Lo, I am sending my messenger to prepare the way before me, and suddenly there will come to the temple the Lord whom you seek, and the messenger of the covenant whom you desire. Yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts, but who will endure the day of his coming? And who can stand where he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire, or like the fuller's lyre. He will sit refining and purifying silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, refining them like gold or like silver, that they may offer due sacrifice to the Lord. Then the sacrifice of Judah and Jerusalem will please the Lord, as in the days of old, as in years gone by. Lo, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the day of the Lord comes, the great and terrible day, to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the hearts of the children to their fathers, lest I come and strike the land with doom. The word of the Lord. Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God, my Savior. Lift up your heads and see, your redemption is near at hand. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice. He teaches the humble his way. Lift up your heads and see. Your redemption is near at hand. All the paths of the Lord are kindness and constancy toward those who keep his covenant and his decrees. The friendship of the Lord is with those who fear him and his covenant for their instruction. Lift up your heads and see. Your redemption is near at hand. Alleluia, alleluia. 
O King of all nations and keystone of the church, come and save man whom you formed from the dust. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord has shown his great mercy toward her, and they rejoiced with her. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise the child, they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, No, he will be called John. But they answered her, There is no one among your relatives who has this name. So they made signs, asking his father what he wished him to be called. He asked for a tablet and wrote, John is his name. And all were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened, his tongue freed, and he spoke blessing God. Then fear came upon all their neighbors, and all these matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. All who heard these things took them, took them to heart, saying, What then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a perennial, perennial form of parental discipline. <clears throat> doesn't seem to be going anywhere. Uh, it's known pretty universally as the time out. That is to say, if you're a young one and you're behaving poorly or complaining about something or just causing trouble in general, your parents may place you in a time out. And so you'll be secluded somewhere, your room perhaps, to uh, not speak to anyone and sort of, uh, sometimes it's accompanied by the exhortation, at least it was for me, Go and think about what you've done here. You know, go and, go and think about what you just said. You know, that type of thing. Uh, you know, I, I, I don't mean to make a <clears throat> complete child out of the, the person of Zechariah. He was a, a priest, you know. Uh, he was, uh, you know, someone obviously entrusted with something great here. But he, we're all children of God, and I think sometimes God has a little bit of a light even a sense of humor with us in, in how he uh, deals with us to get us to get the point of something. And Zechariah, the father of John, up to this moment, has been on a timeout of sorts. He has not been able to speak ever since the angel Gabriel told him about his son John. Ever since Gabriel came to him in the temple and said, look, your wife is going to have a child. That child is going to be named John, right? And he has prophesied to be this prophet is going to prepare the way of the Lord. And Zechariah at first, right, he didn't, he didn't go along with it. He didn't believe it. And so instead of the angel and God kind of standing there taking John's protestations and his complaints and his, you know, all of his questions, said, all right, you're going to be mute for a while. We're just not going to let you talk. And you go and think about what you've done. <laughs> you go and think about what you've said. And uh, what we find in this gospel is that it's ultimately quite effective because at this point, John is mute, but they give him a tablet and say, all right, what's your name? And he doesn't write down his own name because that would be, that would be quite an honor, you know, to name your son after yourself. He doesn't even do that. He says, all right, I get it. His name's John. <laughs> Let's go with John. Uh, there's something about Advent. I know it can be a lot, and I know this time of Christmas obviously can be busy. I do think, though, that God is always pushing us to try to get, make more time for that silence. It's what Cardinal Sarah, you know, uh, he, he often calls silence the first language of God, you know, because I know that when I have problems, my usual move in prayer is to just kind of question and complain and protest and say, what are you doing? Give me an answer. Da, 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 da. I'm just on and on and on, and I'm not really getting a ton back. And uh, part of the reason for that may be that I'm still talking, and I need God to kind of put me on a little time out here, take some time for silence, listen to what God is saying, both, you know, right down in here, but also in and through the people and experiences in my life. If I don't do that, if I don't take that silence, uh, it's very easy to miss uh, the voice of the Lord speaking to us.
Let us bring our prayers to our loving Father who hears us. We pray for the church that in this uh, busy Advent season, as we come near to Christmas Day, we may each take and find time for silence in our lives to listen to the voice of the Lord. We pray to the Lord. We pray for those who lead us in our society, that they may do so in a way that protects the dignity of the most vulnerable in our midst, especially the poor. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who are sick, especially those struggling with coronavirus, and for all those who care for them. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the intention of this Mass, for Aurora Martinez, for her intentions. We pray to the Lord. We pray also for all those who have died, for all of our loved ones who have gone before us in faith. We pray also, especially at this time of year, for all those who grieve. We pray to the Lord. Let's take a moment now to remember in silence the the prayers that are on our own hearts. We pray to the Lord. We ask you, O loving Father, to hear these prayers. We make them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, who will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation by which divine worship in its fullness has been inaugurated for us be our perfect reconciliation with you, O Lord, that we may celebrate with minds made pure the nativity of our Redeemer, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him, the Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Blaise, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. <clears throat> At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other some sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Grant your peace, O Lord, to those you have nourished with these heavenly gifts, that we may be ready with lighted lamps to meet your dearly beloved Son at his coming, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life.